So hello everyone and welcome to our first Leadership Lives event on LinkedIn. Tonight we're going to have a fascinating conversation about the power of storytelling in change featuring Ash Roots and John Sleeper and will be graphically recorded by the talented Gemma Honor. So why Leadership Lives? AWA has always been about giving back to the community and together with our sister company Brighter Work these events seek to share stories about leaders working in product change and leadership space. As we know, leadership plays a pivotal role in shaping and advancing our organizations. And here at Brighter Work and AWA, we're dedicated to developing leaders through transformational training, coaching and mentoring. It's our hope and mission that through our work and community events like tonight, we can make a positive impact in making working life better for everyone. Over to you, Gemma. Thank you, Charlie. So welcome everybody to this Leadership Lives. It's the very first Leadership Lives that we're doing. And it is my great pleasure to um, kick off this series of events with the wonderful John Sleeper uh, and Ash Roots. So John Sleeper is a coach who I've worked with for a number of years and actually came across him whilst we were working in the same organisation and at the same time as Ash. Um, I really loved John and instantly knew I had a lot to learn from him because of all of the work that he does in the leadership space um, and also his awesome knowledge. Oh, you've just gone on mute. I just went on mute and I've yeah. got no idea how. Um, but thank you. So um yeah, so I I think I, I think I got muted whilst I was paying John sleeper compliments. Uh so <laughs> uh so yeah, if there's any enemies of John Sleeper out there and they've got the Zoom controls, I'm holding you accountable. They have some power there. Uh so yeah, I came I really I really like knew I had loads to learn from John because he's kind of uh he knows a lot about systems coaching and so he tends to take a systems view of things which I think gives him a great insight into leadership and um thinking about organizations um he's also an AWA trainer of our um transformational leadership course um which I've had the pleasure of co-training alongside him um We've we when we were coming up with who we wanted to interview for these leadership lives, um, we were thinking about who was it that really had impact on us as leaders, and who did we see in organisations that we saw make real cultural change. And for both me and John, Ash's name was like right at the top of that list. So. When we were working with MBT, we saw Ash's ability to communicate authentically and the immense power that that had on like day to day ways of working and how people interacted. He had a really clear ability to influence culture um, and the way that he communicates uh, is, I think, to the point, but also he has a brilliant way of kind of harnessing diversity as part of his leadership style as well. So welcoming, very welcome, uh, big welcome to Ash. Uh, and I'm looking forward to today's conversation between John and Ash. And I am also going to be graphically recording it into a beautiful sketch note, which would, should be available from tomorrow. So over to you, John. Thank you, Gemma. And thank you for that, that introduction. Really, really excited to be here and um, really excited to see your graphic illustration at the end of it as well. And yeah, just really, really happy to be here and to be kicking this off, kicking off this series of conversations with, can you hear me? You're a little bit spiky. Yeah, you went a bit funny there, John. That's a great start, isn't it? You're right, though. Keep going. What a great... Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we got you back. Yeah. Okay, so... 
So I was just going to start with, so the topic is the power of communication and storytelling in leading change. And so there's quite a few words amongst all of that. And I guess I'm, I really just wanted to, to hear your views on it, Ash. How would you start with the power of communication and storytelling in leading change? Um, I'm going to get really distracted by Gemma drawing, aren't I? But it's going to be a good way. Um, Hello everyone. Uh, uh, how would I how would I start on a comment on that? Well, I, I think the, the the main thing I, I think the headline would be, and I've learned this through many other people, um, is that communication has traditionally, in the experience I've had, been around uh, in in the change context, been about communicating the change. Um, but actually, what I noticed uh, and learned from others is the fact that actually communication, in many ways can drive the change and it's a it's a complete flip really on therefore what you use communication for and how you use it and also what is communication without kind of going too far down the route of trying to unpick it but like what is it yeah so absolutely. use it to drive change yeah okay so we use communication to drive change and and you ask what is it because because one of the things i don't know what you think of this but I often think, it, it, you know, we talk a lot about culture as well. And I, and I often think communication and culture are maybe two sides, the two opposite sides of the same coin. I wonder what you think of that. Well, I mean, um, uh, the word culture is, is, is kind of one of those words that's used in so many different ways uh, but, and means so many different things. But, I mean, culture in some ways incorporates everything in my view you know because it, it is the the mindset the behaviors the values of a particular bunch of people and the way people communicate or the impact of communication on that group of people will be impacted by what they believe or they value therefore the culture or alternatively it will be able to impact it by trying to change it so you know if if a communication is a promotion right yeah i'm promote, promoting x then that will change the culture because the culture will see that whoever got promoted did certain things in their view that got them a promotion. So they're, they're kind of, they're intrinsically linked. Um, but, but arguably they're, they're two very different things. I mean, culture is just all over the place sure, uh, as sure. in everywhere. Yeah. I've just got a cup of tea delivered. Oh, nice. I've got, let me have a sip of my water as you have a bit of your tea. And it's cold, and it's cold. So I, th I think it might be a cup of tea I had earlier. <laughs> cold tea. I mean, cold water's all right, but I'm all not right. sure about cold tea. And it's so, rubosh. Ah, is that that's anyway? A, crack on. That's a good thing, right? Um, so yeah, I, I guess the context is communication in leading change. So the power of communication and storytelling in leading change. So I, I suppose that's why I'm kind of going to try and nudge things a little bit in terms of what you think about communication and leading change. And, and I think you said something about you can use it to drive something. So can you use it to drive change? Yeah. I mean, the other, the, just the other thing, and I'll throw a few things and see where we get to, right? So, so the other part about change is that change is not normally comfortable. In anything in life, moving house, I don't know, finding a new job, getting a new job, having kids, you know, like, oh, whatever it is, I know. You get the idea, no, everyone knows it changes. But change, change is not normally comfortable. And so in leading change, actually one of the critical things is to, to really face into that discomfort and one of the simplest, even though it's not always simple to execute, but the simplest, easiest ways in is through communication. So if you're a leader in a changing environment, the first tool you've got in your toolbox to at least lean into the discomfort of change is communication. You know, hello, as an example. I mean, one of my favorite memories was when I was working at three, the CEO there, uh, a gentleman called Kevin Russell, used to make his tea, uh, a cup of tea, in the main kitchen going back to cups of tea nice interesting cleaner um and, and the impact it had on everyone around was huge because he didn't get his pa or someone's someone you know else to make a cup of tea he went out and made it and, and it was an environment of a startup where it was a lot of pace a lot of fear about roles and responsibilities and suddenly every day you'd see this person who's been perceived as 
you know the top of the tree would just become a long dunk in a tea bag in a in a in a in a, in a cup and it, it was more impactful for me anyway and for many because people commented on it than 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 sitting in a meeting and talking about sales with him yeah because it, it made he made him feel approachable um so yeah so to me you know change being uncomfortable being able to communicate being able to feel approachable is a form of communication in itself in fact it, it creates the ability to communicate and obviously in change as well that change because it's not easy there can be communications that are not always positive so again it's the conditions to communicate in a changing environment have to be created through communication in itself without making yeah. too many cycles there no no i like that so so there's something about um the how we kind of maybe present ourselves and in and, and in an informal way to help to just to, to help us to be more approachable i think is is kind of what you're talking about and and that actually that is communication sort of like our body language and the, and the way we behave can can is a form of communication yeah i mean I, I, i'm not a communications expert in terms of the definition going back to that part but i think we all know that communication isn't just words hence yeah. why we've got Gemma creating pictures you know hence why it is body language i mean you know like that the phrases that are kind of common sense and cliches in some ways but you know how someone feels after a conversation is sometimes more impactful and remembered than what they said so is that feeling a communication yeah arguably yes and if so, how do you create those feelings in a communication in whatever environment you're in to foster the right type, sorry, the right type of next step, if you want to call it that, or the right, you know, the right type of impact? Um, and and that is where you know, like, I, I never forget a culture one where where someone was talking about, and there's quite a few of these. If you want to change a culture. You could tell everyone to do something, but the impact of that is going to be limited. But if you, you know, if you want to be a, you said approachable. So like, you know, uh, the, the phrase is quite like, my door is always open. How many times have we heard that? And then you actually, the reality is the door is never really open. It's shut physically. Uh, and then you yeah. have, uh, a, you know, some type of management of time that gets in the way, diaries, et cetera. Um, but actually a communication is, and I, you know, these stories are, to exist and i'm sure they're true people removing doors physically yeah and, and is that the strongest form of communication to turn around and say to people look i'm here for you versus telling them i'm here for you yes so, so it's sort of back to the behavior that demonstrates the words other than just just the words themselves yeah yeah, yeah exactly and and i mean if you go back to like leading change storytelling and communication as four kind of territories all working together is is they all they all need different interventions or or, or activities to enable something to happen but they are all related uh, yeah. and you could argue that communication is the foundation but it's the form of communication isn't just a word spoken or written even though they they could be good too, right? And what about because the other word we've got in this is power? What about power in communication and storytelling? Not that word. Um, well, I mean, I, I mean, it, did the if you're talking about change, it's talking about doing something different and. Uh, to successfully try to do something different and maybe even just to try something different is, is, is a power in itself. I mean, any one of us has been in a situation where we individually or with others have had to try and do something that we haven't done or needs to be done differently. That is quite powerful in itself. So, you know, like if, if communication enables people to try something different however it was communicated whether they succeed or not actually is secondary to the power of the attempt and, and that's what i i always find quite amazing with all of the opportunities i've had and the people around me is and where 
the broadest form of communication has always been something that's been quite mild you know it's quite amazing it's like you know what people take from what you say or how you say it or from what you do as a communication and the impact it has where you don't expect it you know oh i remember when i did or yeah. when, when i saw not necessarily what, what the words you said and and then the power it had on them to do something different or remember that that to me that's why that's why power is the thing you know doing something different or having the attempt to sorry to do the kind of the comfort to try something different is just is a very powerful thing yeah and it's amazing how sometimes you know it could it can be received in a as a very very powerful thing Um, and yeah, surface, you know, we talk a bit in agile about Gemba is sort of a, a lean word, actually, which is to kind of get out of your office and go and see what's happening on the on the factory floor, which I guess kind of a, a, a links to what you were saying about the person at three who would go and make his tea to kind of get out the office and, and be around the people that are doing the work. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Completely. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, like, you know, it's actions, actions in, in a working sense are the things that most people want to see. You know, the words are good, but they need to follow action. I want a promotion. I want a pay rise. I want to know what this means to me. I want to know what the strategy is. Actually, I, you know, you either bring it to life through some communication before it happens or you try and make it happen. And one of the things, that if you, you mentioned agile and, and what what's beautiful about agile is actually when you break agile into components it, it is and I, I i people who know me know i use this phrase a lot it's common sense right you know not having large numbers of teams having small groups of people you know teams because it's easier for people to share information and and to do stuff right that's 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 kind of the, the common sense and and how you communicate within those groups of people is actually you want to tailor it to individuals but you want to do it in a way that is in you know is absorbing enticing and wants to bring people with you yeah yeah absolutely and 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 i guess that's part of the principles that we want to include the people we want to respect the people and we want to make use of their their knowledge and experience you know that's why we've hired them to make use of them their knowledge and skills um so yeah just sort of coming so the leading change you know so this is about um having an impact in terms of affecting some change and leading that change what about the storytelling bit well storytelling i, I never sits comfortable with that phrase because it's it's a lot of a lot of my my life and still is I, I'm, I'm quite anxious and I, I don't always feel comfortable and I haven't always felt comfortable talking to people you know, you know it sounds bonkers um, but it is a truth even even sitting and being waiting for this leadership live on LinkedIn is like my mind is racing and I get you know and it's um and I do what I've just done there, which is really interesting. Is I my my, my, my mind just forgets. It's quite like that. Oh, yeah. What was that question he said? What was yeah. that question? So I need to ask you again. What was that question? Right. About so so the question was just I was just I guess what I was doing is I was trying to bring in the notion of storytelling into because that's no, I got it. Yeah. So, so so for me, um, what I was saying was storytelling has always been a thing that. Has, kind of like a bit I, I don't know it doesn't sit well with me the reason is because I've always been uncomfortable sharing my ideas and views because I get quite anxious and storytelling was always the thing I used to hear I've heard for years like tell a story you know like and it's like well it doesn't feel natural so if someone said to me write yeah. a story I wouldn't be able to do it but but the way I translate storytelling is is the word like Gemma uses authenticity or, or, you know, it's just being authentic, explaining things as they are is the simplistic way of, for me, of telling a story. You know, it, it, it is. And if anyone out there is like, you know, being told, oh, you, you know, tell stories more or, you know, you know, reframe your communication. Actually, the thing to start with is just tell it as you, as you think it is. Don't try and write it or say it or whatever, do it in a way that you think others would do which is why storytelling could be, you know, oh, he's a great storyteller. 
Um, but just do it in a way that is useful to you about, you know, how do you know, tell, tell things that, you know, that you, you believe are true or experiences you've had. And so, so it's authenticity. So, so storytelling, if I'm, uh, and there's a little bit of waffle there, and that's what sometimes I do, which is I'm consciously saying that because of the topic of this, this, this call. But storytelling to me has always been about just, just use real examples. Say how you feel. Say what you've seen. Say what you think. And and that that you know like that that hits home. You know, um, in a change, sometimes you have to give bad news. In fact, a lot of the time you give bad news. Um, and it's very hard to do bad news well. Yeah. But if you are authentic and it's not storytelling in terms of falsehoods, but storytelling in terms of there's a situation, this is what it is. This is where I sit within that situation. These are some examples of things that I've tried to do to mitigate this piece of information that I need to give you. That is a story. Because it's not a story in terms of start, middle and end, I don't know, chapters, all the stuff I tried to research, whatever. It was a story in terms of authenticity. Yeah. So to me, all the storytelling is is the is really authentic. You know, be you who you are and tell it how you see it. And I think you've just demonstrated that really, really well, you know, because because I hear you. And, and, and actually, I have a similar response to the notion of storytelling. It can be... Um, it can be a pressure. Oh, I've got, suddenly there's a pressure. I've got to tell a story. Whereas actually, if you're just, as you say, authentic, you might be telling a story without actually realising that you're telling a story. And I'm not saying yeah. it's all like that, but, but I think the authentic thing, I, I, I definitely hear you with that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to me, and just, just if it helps anyone, is like um, the, the thing I learned with storytelling was not learn how to be good at telling stories because I'm, I, I'm not in my head. I, I get very stressed when having to write a story, but 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 create a structure that enables you to be able to plod through something that you're trying to share. Which um, you know, which I did just then really was more kind of like you know, set context to everything, and show what you think about the thing that you're setting context to. Talk about some of the challenges. You just set a structure with most things, and then and actually you realise, oh, actually it's a story. You know. Um, yeah. And also, like you say, sometimes, you know, in I guess you're saying in, in a leadership role, there, there sometimes you might have to tell some bad news and maybe just do it respectfully and honestly, as opposed to kind of milking it in some ways or, or kind of trying to wash it around in some ways. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's your words. Um, it's, um, yeah, of, of course. Maybe I mean, like, I, I, mean like, no, 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 and I think if you go back to that, like again, communication, change, leadership, it's, it's all about people, right? And and us, uh, you know, I I believe that most people have the right intention. They just need to understand certain things, right? Uh, and um, and I think that's that's where you should you, good or bad news or any any kind of thing. You, you've got to try and a be yourself because there's no point being anyone else. Different aspect, but it's the truth in communication. But it's actually. You're just trying to connect people's thoughts and processes. Um, and actually, you mentioned agile, and one of the, the challenges with communication a lot of the time is that. And, and and I, you know, one of my favorite bits of feedback, and they know who they are if they're listening, is like, you know, like, Ash, I understand you about seventy five percent of the time, and I thought that was quite good. I thought seventy five percent is pretty good, but I think there's a cack handed bit of feedback saying actually I don't understand you twenty five percent of the time, um, but that's fine. But but what's interesting with communication is one is being able to get a communication out there, but with diversity of thinkers and people is the fact that for everyone to have the same understanding about what that actually means once they've also got it that's even more so communication is not like even one and done it's like you know like you know that's why it's, it's about you're trying to connect people to something that you might be the trigger but actually you're just you're laying it out there so like we've said in a few other things already john is like you know that's why it is about you know being set in the right conditions being approachable laying something out there telling you know kicking it off showing it's about kind of it's a, in some ways it's a dance more than anything it's like you know you, you know communication isn't do this it's right in change it's something's going to be different you may not know the answer but we're about to go and try and do it are you involved in this kind of thing and it could be remove your door because my door's always open it could be make a cup of tea shows i'm a normal human being or 
in traditionals, you know, worlds, which I didn't really, didn't appeal to me, or you could stand up and do a PowerPoint presentation where you say there are five strategic themes that we need to do, and these are our objectives, is everyone up for it, you know? Yeah, I got two two things in my mind. I got this image of a dance floor and everybody dancing on the dance floor. And if it's you know good communication, we're all kind of quite coordinated. Um, and maybe in other cases when it's not, we're kind of just doing our own thing. <laughs> um, but that was the, yeah, you kind of fed me that image somehow. Um, I'm sorry. That was an all right image. I was quite <laughs> happy with the image. Um, so the other thing is, I've just got a little quote. Um, Because I looked up a bit about storytelling um, in sort of preparation for this. And so there's one, um, good stories surprise us. They make us think and feel. They stick in our minds and help us remember ideas and and concepts in a way that a PowerPoint crammed with bars and bar graphs never can. So this was Joe Lazowskis and Shane Snow, who I think they wrote the storytelling edge. Any thoughts on that? I don't, I don't, yeah, so I was, as a delay, so I thought I'd say something. Um, I, I don't, I don't disagree with it, but it, it's, it's one of the things that actually is, it goes back to what you said, what we both agree on is like the storytelling thing makes me more fearful about trying to do it than actually embracing it. I mean, I've, I've you know, of course, a bar graph is actually pretty good for certain things, but yeah, it's, you know, someone who tells a really engaging story, but you know, you can't tell an engaging story in the way that, I interpret what you've described those people would probably write about, about all, you know, day-to-day stuff, you know, like, you know, I mean, you know, it feels like you get story fatigue in in one way. What it is more about is constant nudges in communication or or interventions, you know, nudges and interventions to to get somewhere. So in some ways, I mean, if you want to use the storytelling analogy is it's, it's not just, Con, you know a story a story a story it's actually if you take change is the whole you, you're writing a story you're already writing it and, and so and, and I actually have done this in the past I remember there's a group verse was it BT I think it was where we were um and and tell me if you think this is communication so we were, we were doing an off-site right and uh you know everyone does off-sites everyone's done one everyone has feelings about them but we we chose to rent uh uh, a place uh, uh basically a house on airbnb go somewhere in the middle of nowhere so it's that arguably a bit of retreatist but the reason was from a communication standpoint is we wanted to make it a little bit uncomfortable in the fact that it was out of our you know usual residence but also it was the fact that you weren't in a hotel you weren't being served on you had to cook together you had to serve meals together you know it was kind of that kind of environment um and you know, like the the the, the key thing um, that that we had. I've just lost my train of thought again. See, this happens a lot. Go on. Well, so, Go so, back to where we were. Well, yeah. So we were just talking storytelling nudges. Yeah, I was at the storytelling nudges thing, um, and you were sort yeah. of talking about going on on a, a Air, Airbnb retreat with some of your fellow leaders. Yeah. Ah, uh, and because it's telling, it's about writing a story. Right. So rather than you storytelling in the context of leading, change and communicating, imagine the change was the story. So when we were away at this retreat, using your words, and it was the context was really important to make sure the communication was free flowing, you know, cooking for each other, as I said, we wrote the first chapter together of the story. Nice. So, so to start the change, it was like, what would the chapter be? And actually, I still think I've got it. We actually wrote what, I mean, because, you know, Amazon do things like press releases, that kind of thing. But actually, we thought we'd write the story together. So if I backtrack and try and connect all these bits together, is that storytelling in change, yes, in, you know, communicating change is good. My view is that it can be quite scary because people think you've got to tell stories. But the principle of having the structure and the fact that it entices you in, like you were saying, is much more exciting. People like stories. I like the feeling, like the adventure, what happens next. Actually, in change, imagine the change was the story. So you're not telling the story. You're actually, everyone is the story. And and that was one of the things we did there where we all sat down and wrote kind of like, okay, well, what do we think the first chapter is? And what Uh, do we think the last one is? I really like that, Ash. When you talked about that, it made me think of, um, I think it's called the Disney strategy where you kind of you kind of get into a room it's like an ideas room where everybody can go into the room and just create the story 
so you're saying this you know the story is the change i, I think that's a great idea and 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 well, in okay. the ideas room all ideas are welcome and you're not allowed to say no so it's a sort of phase in the process so it's like a brainstorming thing basically yeah i think i think what you're helping me realize <laughs> is that I, and this is the way I see things, which may, people may disagree with, is that the way we work is changing because of the internet. We're not, we're less hierarchical, we're not factories, we're not, you know, it, there's so many things, but I'll, I'll try and bring it back to the communication part. But the communication part is not about the message from one person, e.g. the senior person in the room. It's about the senior person enabling communication to flow. Nice, yeah. And and I think that that's what you know. Like, if if you think logically, unless there is something that you can hold as the person transmitting the communication that no one else can know, or no one else knows, I don't know. Have we hit our targets? Yes, boom. Okay, that makes sense. But if it's more around generating ideas, bringing people on a journey, understanding opportunities. Um, understanding how people feel and all that kind of stuff then actually you're, you're, what you're trying to do is you're trying to stimulate communication through your communication i don't know if that makes sense no, but that's what you're trying to do you're trying to definitely yeah. makes definitely makes sense to me um so i've got two, two that's right, well hopefully it makes sense to everyone else as well um i'm sure it does so i got two thoughts one i just wanted to well one there's a comment from ranjit uh, saying what if you work remotely and the second one is just want to come back to the nudges thing at some point, but maybe do you want to answer the what if you work? What yeah, yeah. Um, it's a really, it's a really, it's a really good question. We we learned loads during COVID. Like, and who didn't? Uh, when we were at BT, uh, the team was uh, I was leading a team there of at one point of I think it was you know one and a half one one thousand one one thousand five hundred people if you include third parties at BT. I can't, I can't remember the exact number. Uh, and during COVID, it was like you know actually um, it was like everyone was obviously remotely working but it was how, like how did you do everything from motivation uh, working on projects um, ensure that people's well-being was okay uh, to the best of ability keep people informed you name it and actually it was like blimey that the list of problems because of remote working was was greater at that moment in time than anything else so actually the solution was communication and it was it was communication in the way that um, you know I, I don't know I can't remember if you're there John but it's like when we did we did we, we basically turned into a TV show at one point yeah you know, effectively we went right, how do we we have to dial up the frequency we have to so more often we had to make it we had unscripted was one of our things where we said right actually to make sure that the distance of remoteness still kind of came through a screen like this is like we had to do unscripted because it would make we thought the feelings transmit through the ether better if people knew that hold on here like you're asking me questions i've never seen i've never you know i don't know what you're going to ask me so sometimes i answer well sometimes i answer badly but the authenticity part let alone the realism let alone the engagement is great so there's one aspect is that actually um and and you know uh shout out to rich beaumont um about um the book, The Beautiful Constraint, is the constraints of remoteness meant that the communication uh, approaches and interventions we had to double down on. We had to really think through how could you, in a remote way, communicate in a better way. So that was everything, as I said, from, from you know, frequency, yeah. make it personal, unscripted, all that stuff. Um, so, that, so that's a, that's a snippet. Um, and I, so I don't think remoteness is is a reason yeah. to not communicate well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and you you know going back to that thing about you know there's the words that we say there's the tone of our voice and then there's the body language I think you know with cameras on we can still pick up on most of those things I think I think it's fair to say that when you're in the room it it's even better but that's not to say that there's no value cameras on and I I don't know I mean I'm only gonna I'm only gonna challenge that because. Um... One of the things that helped me with my communication in front of audiences live, whether it's remote or not remote, my anxiety was treating everything as an experiment. Yeah. So like now I'm treating it as an experiment. I'm not treating it as, am I going to do well or not? Because that's kind of out of my control. 
Uh, it took me years to work that one out. I can only be as good as I can be. But what am I trying to learn from this experience? And I don't know. I, I've learned more in COVID that I can pick up more about people than I could when I was in the room with them. As a simplest example now is it's like, you know, what have I got behind me? You know, like yeah, we, we did a Exeter University. Uh, we did... Um, we did a whole presentation at Times Higher Education about university strategies for digital. Uh, and we basically set it up to have a, a picture of a piece of corn in the presentation at one of these big events in Leeds University. And we talked through strategies and stuff, had a photo of a piece of corn and carried on talking and then basically turned around and said, what do you remember most piece of corn? Yeah. So I, I think, I think the, 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 the key thing here is experiment with communication, but don't assume that because something is what it is, remote or not remote or anything, that it is better or worse. Just the worst thing to do is to assume you just communicate. Yeah. It's, and one of the, the frameworks that I've always used in my head is I've always said, whenever I want to communicate something, there's two things I have to make sure I'm thinking about in that communication I'm doing. One is there's got to be a twist. So that's, that's what's personal. What makes it ash? What makes it a bit like, you know, what do I want to do? What's the thing I would do in my communication if no one was looking at me that I really want to do? And the second thing is, what's the intervention? What do I want people to do after I've just communicated in whatever form? Even if it's make a cup of tea and dunk it, right? What do I want to do? So, so that to me, then it means you stop thinking about, is that environment better or worse? You just go, right, I need to communicate. This is the situation I'm in. What are the two things going to do? Uh, and yeah, you know, quick example again, and I'm sure we're going to run out of time. Is you know, direct line grit. I'll never forget reading a poem out because um, I, I I was there was there was basically everyone was saying no 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 no. So I was thinking, oh, I've got to say something to say to everyone. Say yes 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 yes. And and so I thought, well, what's the communication? I could say to everyone, please say yes, but that wouldn't work. Um, so what I did was I thought, well, do something as an intervention that means that they go really someone's prepared to do that so i read the poem out which is um it couldn't be done by uh i can never remember the author's name uh the the right the, 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 the name of the person but um but but the message was it couldn't be done but the way of reading a poem out in financial services in front of lots of people people are going well, what what a strange person that is but it's remembered right. sorry so, so everyone's friend. saying no and you're sort of linking that to the to it couldn't be done is that right well, yeah. So I, yeah. my, my view, my communication was to turn nose to yes. Yes. And rather yeah. than just saying it, do Use something Got it. Yeah. as an intervention, which was reading a poem out. Yeah. Got it. And you a, had a and second the, question as well, which I've forgotten. Yes. Um, so, yeah, no, ha, and, and it's a good challenge about not making judgments about comparing different types of communication. That's a good challenge back. Um, so the second one, was nudges so that was just the one yeah. thing that, so i'm kind of still kind of maybe coming back to that a little bit so we're talking about communication as interventions for what you know and and i guess in terms of the topic it's for leading change but you know yeah but for so, so what are we nudging towards how do we know we're moving in the direction well, we want to be moving? yeah i mean I, that depends on a whole load of factors but you know let, let's take um obviously there'll be you know a strategic target or goal of an organization or an entity which was that kind of i suppose quite high level but even that can help you with communication nudges or like you mentioned culture so you could say what and how right you can have a what goal and a how goal um let's use an example so what goal could be you know double double your sales revenues of something so nudges towards that could be constant reinforcement. It could be educational communication nudges. It could be um, nudging in terms of what good looks like, um, et cetera, et cetera. The, the cultural ones are a bit more subtle. And again, you can create, create um, any kind of target state on that. And you know, let's talk about digital and my experience of digital is like you know experimenters collaborators people that are open people that focus on customers right but if you assume that's the kind of value set that you want a culture to be really thriving on your nudges would would go across those four things as often as possible and a nudge can be tiny it can be as tiny i mean um you know like uh, 
e- even if it's you know like um I used to have this phrase in my head about what was culture and I think it's time and money where where do people spend their time and money so for me the simplistic simplistic start point of any culture change is make sure I spend my time and my money in looser sense of the words in the cultural areas I want to to, to go after or I think we need to go after so openness is quite an easy one I need to make sure I'm open and I share stuff so what are my nudges to that well it's quite obvious really you know whether what you wear how you say stuff how you communicate make sure it's it's open um experimentation is is nudges to how can every day you do something experimental and it's not big it could be very very small it could be the fact that you say to someone right i don't understand what this thing is right even that yeah. phrase in a meeting is powerful as a communication because it unlocks like i don't understand can you explain it's amazing what that sentence does in terms of, and but as a cultural change, but it's just a tiny nudge, but it's a cultural change of experimentation. It reduces fear. Um, yeah. I'll stop again because I don't want to keep. It's like a, a nudge is maybe related. I'm sort of thinking of that as relating to an experiment really. Um, and, and um, yeah, you know, the idea, your example is sometimes I, I hope I can say this, but it's like the, no one wants to ask, ask no one wants to look stupid by asking a stupid question and yet quite often the stupid question is actually just an open question that helps to maybe open up some thing that we're not talking about could even you know i mean maybe this is a bit drastic but sometimes it's an elephant in the room um and it doesn't have to be quite as drastic as that cool so I got another question in the chat. So Christina Emery asks, what type of storytelling are the most effective to persuade and instill inspiration? Instill inspiration is an interesting phrase in itself. Um, I, I, I don't want I don't to say the same word, but it is, I mean, authenticity is, is really quite inspirational. Um, as one so it's point one if you believe in something say it and that is actually quite inspiring um i I had that in spades at the university um where i met so many people that were experts in their subjects that i have no interest in yeah but when you listen to people that are passionate about something wow that's inspiring i mean like i met i met this country's expert on shakespeare and I had no interest in Shakespeare until I met her. So this is that. So there's that there's that authenticity to inspire. I think it's also prepared to to do something slightly different, and it's not different for the sake of different. Normally, it comes back to your personal style, which is not necessarily authenticity. It's a different thing to me. It's like it's the thing that you know, like all of us have our own houses all of us have our own lives and we do stuff and then there's that kind of like the way we like it to be so it's quite inspirational when people do things with it that's why i use the word twist is like if you have a concept or an idea and you're sharing it share it in a way that you think is maybe normal because others probably won't and that's quite inspiring too so if you notice i'm trying to avoid because it's not like, you know, you have to say something or come up with a massive solution. It's like one is the way you do it is do it all, you know, like with authentic, you know, authentically and with you and your beliefs right out in the front. But give it a twist of what you think, you know, is the good way of doing it. Um, you know, do you like art? Do it artistically. It's the way Gemma's doing it now. If you, if you like words, do it well. I mean, you know. Um, yeah or even you know like yeah so so i i don't think it's over complicating it i i i I mean i think microsoft has got a lot to answer for because powerpoint is becoming one of the core fabrics of communicating in a workplace outside of all these other collaboration tools and the problem is with that is it means that you have to learn a tool and wrestle a tool to be able to communicate and i actually think it means that we overthink whereas if we have a good idea put your belief into it and do it in a way that you think is normal, but everyone else won't. There's a sort of, um, I think you might have even used the word, but there's a sort of simplicity in 
I think what you're saying, which um, um, I guess is easy to overlook or uh, or take for granted even. Um, and, well, I, yeah, go on. And sorry, you just reminded me. I mean, this reminds me of like early in my career, I think that's a phrase that people use. I was, I was at three and uh, there was a gentleman who's now the CEO at BTE. Uh, so you'll work that one out. And I remember he said to me once, and I was probably 23. And I remember going in there and presenting in PowerPoint about some stuff to do with online and e-commerce. And I remember I used to, first of all, I never used the company templates, which people used to kind of not like. I used to use black and white, like the black and white font in PowerPoint. But I remember this because I used to put them in shapes. I spent all my time trying to work out for each slide how to put words in shapes. So regardless of what the word said, I just thought it was really important because everyone's PowerPoints just look the same. So yeah. they look the same. They look the same. And I remember he, he he called out. He said, oh, I look forward to your presentations because there was one strategy. He said, oh, he, he actually called out once. He said, oh, the triangle one. The triangle strategy. I want to do that one. And, and that to me is like, we go back to simplicity. It's like, you know, when, when, you, when you're presented with, powerpoint you're going clip art you're going this you're going bullets you're going that whereas actually you, you're not really you're not engaging you you're engaging the machine whereas what i why i sort of like well hold on there you want a powerpoint fine tick the box but actually i'm going to give you a powerpoint in the way that i think to communicate this is i need to make it stand out and make it memorable yep. I could, a uh, and a picture paints a thousand words i don't know how many words a triangle paints but but clearly it worked in that case <laughs> yeah great possibly thank you thank you so much ash i've um really enjoyed really enjoyed this conversation mm. thank you i think we're coming to time are we charlie yes we are just running over but thank you uh, john and thank you ash so much for your time this evening like absolutely love that conversation and i really really loved the bit about how you involve the people in the change in the storytelling of that change. I think that's really powerful um, sharing with the community. So thank you very much for that. Um, I also really love the whole bit about the authenticity and how important that is, especially if you're feeling anxious about storytelling and just having that structure so you can actually share your actual stories rather than maybe something else. Yeah, I loved it. Thank you. And just one other thing to add, because I've just seen it in the chat, and Andy Tinker Switzer added the poem is, is Edgar Albert Guest. Is that right? Yeah, he looked it up. Thank you. Um, so our next uh, Leadership Live will be on the 5th of December, featuring Ling Lee, um, CTO at Insider, and Greg Gigon, Head of Engineering Pro Productivity at the Direct Line Group. And they'll be talking about AI and change in the workplace. So we really hope you can all join us there. But anyway, thank you very much. And thank you, Gemma, for doing fabulous visual recording. I can't wait to see that uh, when we'll share it online soon. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. <laughs>